So in the previous videos, I've been showing you how to create the entire layout, including the walls, the doors, and the window. Now, in the last video, we also extracted a point. Now we're going to be using that point, which we have here, and we're going to be developing it and putting it, putting a bed here and some nightstands. Now what I'll be doing is taking a plan that I've already created in Rhino and taking some of the blocks. So I'll take these blocks, I'll copy them, I'll move them down here, and now we can use these blocks within Grasshopper. So let me show you some of the things that we need to do to set that up. So we can not just use it within this floor plan, but maybe we could use it in other floor plans as well. And we'll make it that so that it can be brought in just using a point. So let's get into it. First thing we need to do is set this up correctly in terms of the X and Y. I'm going to delete this because we actually only need one side. And right now it's actually as a group. So I'll do control shift G to ungroup. Now let's delete this. And now let's take both of these. And I like to use a gumball. So if you don't have that on, that would be down here. Let's rotate it. Holding shift, I can do 90 degrees this way. And now we have this. And we're actually doing this separate from the bed. I'll actually delete this because we can create that parametrically for the size of that. So for now, we have this as the nightstand and this as the bed. Actually, the more that I think about it, this is just a rectangle. So that's actually not that difficult to create. So we'll delete this. Let's bring in the bed and then we'll be creating the nightstands parametrically. Now that we have separated the bed, we need the bed along with a point. And this is always the case when you use a block, you have an insertion point. Usually when you don't have an insertion point, the origin becomes the insertion point. But here in Grasshopper, what we need to do is also create an insertion point and we can do that ourselves. So let's go here to a point, create it here within Rhino. And so now we have the bed and the point where we want to insert the bed. Now we can create multiple points for one block but it's better it's best if we use that center point and then we can actually move that point if we want to shift it around and rotate it relative to that point so now let's bring in two components here inside a grasshopper one is going to be curve component because these are actually line segments or curves and then we're also bringing in a point component because we want to bring in this point as the reference now wherever you place it that's actually where it's going to always be. But we don't necessarily always have to preview it. So it doesn't matter where you put it as long as you have the point on that block. Now, let's select the point, go to the points here and go to set one point. Now let's go to the bed, select it. We'll go to curve and we'll go to set multiple curves. So now we brought this in to Grasshopper. And if we move it, it'll move with it. Here is the important point that we need to do now is we need to internalize data. So when you go here in Grasshopper and you right click on the point and you go to internalize data and you go to the curve and you right click and go to internalize data. Now that information has been brought into Grasshopper and it has been kind of been baked into it. So now we can actually delete that information here inside of Rhino. Let me show you. Let's select it and then go to delete. Now you'll see that we have brought in the point and the bed. And now all we need to do is move this to that location and also create a rotation component to it. The cool thing about this is that you can create many different blocks that have a lot of detail and you can internalize data that way you don't have to create it within Grasshopper. So now let's take this point and let's move it to that location. So what we need to do now is go to a line component. This way you can visualize from where you're moving it to where you're moving it. So this would be the start point because that's where the bed is. And the end point is going to be the bed wall center location as the end point. Now we're going to move using a vector. Let's go to a move component. 
what are we going to move? Well, we need to move the bed, which is this component with the internalized data, so that we'll plug that into the geometry input. And then in the motion, well, we have a line segment, and technically a line segment is a vector that has a magnitude, so we can use this line as a motion. So now we've moved the bed to that point. Now let's rotate it using the point from the, from the bed, bed wall point. We can do that either out of this output, or I like to sometimes use a relay. You do that by double clicking here in the, uh, in the input and you get a relay. Now we can use this relay as our plane which is going to be where it's going to be rotated from. Then we use, what are we going to rotate? We're going to rotate the bed. And the angle, well, depending on whether you, well, for the most part, you're going to use degrees. So we'll right click here and go to degrees. And let's go to 90. So this has been rotated by 90 degrees. Obviously we can go less. So now we've created this little machine and script or algorithm that allows us to move a bed to a point. So let's now take the original location of where that bed is and let's middle click, disable preview. So this is going to, if I select this, group it. Let's relabel this bed block all right so now that we're moving this around i'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit here so you can see everything and i'll make sure to have this available for you to download until the next video is released and i actually want to continue on with this idea of creating architectural floor plans using Grasshopper. So for now, let's continue. Now that the bed has been rotated 90 degrees, notice that it's right up to it. So there are two things that we can do. We can either take this point and move it, or we can take the bed at the end and move it. I would suggest doing the first one that I talked about, and we'll go to move this point. In which direction? Well, when we look at this design, it's in the X positive direction. So I'll bring in a component, unit X, plug this into the motion, and now we can move it by a specific amount. Now the units that I'm using are inches. So if I do 2.5, it's going to be 2.5 inches away from the wall. And we can always change this, of course. Let's go here to three inches. And now that we moved that point, well, now we need to override the location of where the bed is going. And this then now gives us the ability to move the bed away from the wall. So then this becomes bed offset from wall. And if we increase the size of the room, it'll stay in the middle. And if we want to shift it, this is where we add, we could add an additional moving it in the X direction, then moving it in the Y direction, either positive or negative. So now let's do that. We could either bring in a new component and add it to it, or vector x y z so we'll use this vector we'll use the x vector again get rid of this and now the y component this is going to be bed shift so i'll copy this by sliding it and tapping alt this is going to be bed shift from center now this Minimum, we'll do minus 20. Maximum, 20.
let's go here in the y direction and now we can see that we can change this and actually shift it left or right we'll keep it at zero which means it's going to be centered and so this is how we can do that and we can do this with other things the next part we're going to be using that same center point and moving it over to create the nightstands so starting with our center point we're going to use the one that's already been offset and now move this point x positive so let's go here to move this point that has already been moved here we'll use that Move it in the x or in the y direction. We'll go here to 65. Okay. Now, this is going to be the location of the beginning of the rectangle. Now, we're going to move it in a specific x and y direction to create the rectangle for the bed or for the nightstand. So let's go here to move the geometry. So this point into the geometry input. Let's go here, vector x, y, z. And you'll see that it's actually going to be a positive x and a positive y. So we'll be going here and saying 24 x, 24 y. So we'll make it 24 inches square. And this vector will be the motion here so now if it's going to be depending on the size we can move that point the reason why we create two points is because two points is all that's necessary as long as they're planar to create a rectangle so let's go here to rectangle two points we'll be using this as the point a this as point b and now we can actually visualize it Maybe this way is 16, 24. And we can also shift it further, right? So if we use this as the input, then this could be, well, you could probably just shift this in the X direction. So maybe I'll show you how to do it that way move in the x direction and we can shift it further by how much well we'll make sure to have some decimal points there so we can see and be a little bit more subtle about how we shift that sometimes you don't want it all to be all the way back there you want it to be like maybe aligned just so it looks visually okay now we're going to take this rectangle, create an area component, which means we're going to get the centroid or the center point and create a circle, which represents a lamp. And we'll use the plane input for the point. And the radius is going to be the size of the lamp. So we'll go here to 6.5. hide the point and now here we can take this point and create a plane an x z plane okay an x z plane right here why because we want to mirror this information this and this to the other side so it's symmetrical let's take this point bring in an x z plane because when you use a mirror component you need to use a plane as a reference we'll use this plane and use the mirror component use the plane input and plug in both outputs of the circle and the nightstand. 
So at this point, we can look at it this way. And we can shift the bed. <laughs> That's not what I was trying to do. We can shift the location of where they are. We can change the size. And we can shift it forward or back. This includes the lamps. So now what we've done and what I'm going to do is finish up cleaning this and I'll have it for you guys to download. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know. This is a series of videos that I want to continue with, which is creating two dimensional architectural layouts that can be changed using the slider so you can have a library of preset designs that you can use for the future. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.